Hi. Uh, my name's Kenny, Kenny Chung, uh, from South West London. Um, this is a question to the experts, actually. In terms of the move towards a transitional economy, um, in your opinion, what would be the most pressing issues, the most two or three pressing issues to tackle first? Would that be energy, water, food grain? What, where, you know, what would be the most pressing issues to actually try and tackle first? Well, I get... Uh, huh? Well, I guess it depends who you're talking about, really. I mean, are you talking about national so, government or no, what transition well, initiatives do? Well, I, I, I mean, I think the experience, I mean, as we've heard really here with all the fantastic stuff that's happening all across London, mm. is actually is often where, often food is where these things get started. And actually food, food projects you can get started within a, within a short period of time without the need necessarily for, for funding or budgets or whatever. Uh, and so they tend to be where it gets started. It, it's a, it, take, it's, it takes much less time to plant some fruit trees in a, in a town than it does to set up a, an energy company that puts a wind turbine up. So different things kind of come in at different times. So I suppose, you know, food, energy, all those things need to be looked at. But in terms of where initiatives, I mean, certainly it was the experience that I <coughs> heard here as well. It's where food is, is often where these things get started. But while the food projects are the very visible ones that people become aware of, in the background, there's the groups working away doing the energy stuff and the retrofitting stuff and starting to set up the models for energy co-ops and that kind of stuff. So things kind of are sequenced. And it's different everywhere. That's the other thing that's fantastic listening to this. You know, every group does it very differently and every group has a different way of working and a different culture and a different and, and, and a different practice, which is how it should be really. Well, <coughs> I must say I was hugely excited listening to all of this because um, of, of the sheer range of what is being done. Um, I, I agree with Rob. I don't think it's either food or energy. Water, of course, is the thing which is probably most scarce of all in the long run. But the food and energy are absolutely critical and it's no, there's no ordering which one needs to do things. One needs to tackle all of it. And it is being tackled, as Rob says, in a huge variety of ways. The other thing that really excited me is that, of course, what you're doing is actually beginning to make things. This word make appeared regularly. We live in an increasingly consumer society, which is all about selling. It's about them selling to us what is profitable to them and changing that. I mean, what you're doing is establishing, I think, the foundations for a counter-economy or a counter-civilization. And that's exactly what I think is needed. And I really was excited by the idea of a, uh, a special currency. Uh, a currency which is used to exchange things which are relevant to a, a, a green or renewable economy and not part of their economy. I think that's an extremely exciting idea. So I, th I think it is all of them. And it is, above all, let people decide themselves what it is they want to make, what they want to do, and do it in their own way. And linking up, I mean, the numbers uh, in Britain, 200 now, transition movement, how long have they been going? 10 years? Four years. Four years. I mean, when are you going to be in another four years and another four years? I mean, when are you going to take over the country? Can't wait for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a lawyer, so obviously I look at this within a legal context and not just at an international level, but also in micro, how can we deal with this on a national level? And certain laws can be put in place that actually act as kind of uh, trim tabs, I call them in my book. Uh, a trim tab, for those who don't know what that is, it's a little rudder that you have uh, connected to a far larger rudder on a cruise ship. And the energy that's expended to get that rudder to turn is just one finger. The person who presses the button, which then leads to the line that turns that tiny rudder, which then gets the cogs to turn, then finally turning the larger one, and the ship can turn very, very fast. Some laws are trim tabs. Back in the 18th century, we had the Enabling Acts, the Canal Enabling Acts. What happened there was that we created laws so that we could build canals, and that opened up the door to coal. That opened up exponentially. Suddenly we had coal fields where the coal could be taken along the canals. It used to be it was put on the back of a horse. Suddenly we could have a horse walking along the canal and that horse could drag 400 times as much coal. And suddenly that brought coal energy into houses all over the country. It changed our landscape forever. It allowed lots of other industries to happen. Well, I believe we need enabling acts for transitioning, so transition enabling acts, so that they are the trim tabs that allow all of this to happen very, very fast. 
Time is not on our side, and we need laws to facilitate that. So that's my idea. Are you going to write them? Well, that's an idea. I could. <laughs> I need to think this one through more. Yeah, me too. I just thought of it. <laughs> Questions? I was most interested, um, Rob, in your speech when you talked about the importance of set helping set up local businesses, local entrepreneurs. And I wondered what your views or thoughts were on how transition could help that process. Um, because I look at, um, in Kentish Town where I live, there's now a new Costa coffee or one of those things and people walking around with the with the cups everywhere. And we really need to start thinking about how we get the message about how to boycott those chains. It's not just supermarkets, it's those kind of chains. Because a lot of ethnic minorities in the past were able to set up little cafes or little shops and now that's no longer possible. Is there a way that we can encourage councils not to allow these chains to come into our towns? I think I, I was just thinking before you asked, it, it, feel, it feels a bit strange with the three of us sitting up here asking questions, actually, when there's so many people all across London with such fantastic, relevant experience. They should be going all round for answers, really. I think, and particularly on this one, actually, because, it, because certainly the way that, that transition was originally conceived, like it's set out in the handbook, was that you work your way through doing these different things, and then you build up to doing this kind of plan for the area... <coughs> And then what? And then, and then so, in, strictly speaking, in, in Totnes, we're finished now. We've done. But actually, of course, it's really only just started. And so, for me, I'm about halfway through doing the, the, the sequel to that, really, which is going to be about a different way of looking at how transition works. And that's really saying that, that it, particularly in the current climate, where, where funding is drying up, where really uh, where government funding is going very quickly and a lot of the, the funding organisations, you could, you could almost look at the role of many, many funding organisations as being to distribute, if you like, the sort of the, the, the cream that floated to the surface of, of an oil economy, to distribute the, 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 the excess of that, which again is going to be disappearing. And so for me, it's, it's actually where transition needs to go is, is, is about how do these initiatives become relocalization agencies, in effect. How do we actually, uh, you know, we can come up with all these fantastic ideas about what we want the relocalization of where we live to look like, but who's going to make them happen? Are we going to wait for someone else to make them happen, or are we going to do it? And so, you know, there was some really interesting stuff that was being talked about in, in Brixton there in, in terms of turning some of those ideas into enterprises, and certainly that's that's going to be the thrust of, of the book is, a, is around that, and, and certainly with Transition Network, which is the group that I work with whose aim is to try and support and encourage and, uh, and, and help all the different initiatives all over the place, that feels very much like that's the thrust of our work over the next couple of years, is, is, is working with different initiatives, developing tools for working with initiatives about, okay, so you've got a few ideas, you've got projects coming up, well, maybe you could take that one, maybe you could take that one. And, and for me, ultimately, I, I think, you know, when, when, when I talk to people who are from some of the big philanthropic trusts who fund some transition things and, and other in, uh, sustainable projects, that actually at the moment the way they work is that they have money invested off in God knows where, doing all God knows what, and then, and then, based, and then the interest from that is then given to make, to, to make good things happen. So you invest money in loads of climate destructive dreadful stuff because it has a good return, and then you spend the interest on helping groups stop climate change. So actually, what would it look like if you were actually to take some of those organizations and work with them and say, well, how about we say in five years' time, 50% of your investments are going to be in transition infrastructure? Uh, and the feed-in tariff really helps with that. Uh, and actually, as, as the economics change, you know, if we're shrewd about it, you know, those guys who I showed who, who were the market gardeners in 1897, they were wealthy blokes. You know, they owned a lot of... A lot of they owned... That was a serious operation. And actually, I think we need to be starting... To, to, to be looking at transition initiatives as becoming things that generate employment. And if you look at the cooperative movement in the 1850s, it was started by a small group of people, very principled, that was the idea, but it was designed in such a way <coughs> that actually within 10, 15 years, it was lots of employment for people owned by the place, and that's the kind of model that we, that we need to be looking at, I think. So I think for me, that idea of social enterprise, entrepreneurship is going to be key to where transition moves over the next couple of years.